Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Chris Nelson. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. House members and the governor's lawyer square off on Capitol Hill. Also tonight, Imperial Pacific will be ordered to pay some damages to a local retail store and restaurant, but not as much as the companies had hoped for. And arrivals to the CNMI, while still very low, are trending upwards. In sports, dozens of weekend warriors race to Radar Hill. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. You are everything that matters to me, and I promise to do whatever it takes to keep you healthy, to be comfortable, and to be free. I love you as long as we're together. I'll always make sure that home will always be our best place to breathe. I have here COVID-19 vaccine. I got my COVID-19 shot. How about you? We are to You forgot to shut up my word. I did it for you. For the safety of the community and the public. I did it for my family. I did it for my friends. Just do it. Let's do it together. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. Have a day, Tirwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. You're watching the Wednesday night edition of the Channel 2 News. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has authorized the marketing of three e-cigarette products from VU Solo. It's the first time an electronic nicotine delivery system product has ever been authorized. In its decision, the FDA says the potential benefit to smokers who switch completely or limit their cigarette use would outweigh the risk to youth. The FDA also issued 10 marketing denial orders for flavored e-cigarette products, also from the Vu's Solo brand. A DC law firm objects to a subpoena for a staff member of Governor Torres. Meanwhile, a legislative committee says they are prepared to initiate contempt proceedings. For many, many years, decades, uh, you know, issues of uh, immunities and privileges on the federal level have been raised in connection with senior aides to the president and uh, the Department of Justice, through Republican administrations and Democratic administrations, has uh, been consistent in finding uh, that the um, uh, that senior aides to the executive, in that case the president, are immune from testimony. Um, I provided the committee with two very recent memos from the Department of Justice, one from the Trump administration, one from the Obama administration, that go through the history. Um, and rationale for that kind of immunity. About his office disagrees and says that Garber does not cite any case law in his argument and that no absolute testimonial immunity exists in federal law or the CNMI. Mr. Garber, who is not a registered attorney in the CNMI bar, invokes his knowledge and experience against the people of the CNMI is to disrespecting the people of the CNMI. We should hold true with our purpose 
as a legislative body and take back our constitutional rights as one of the three branches of this government that rightfully belongs to the people of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands and to restore the checks and balances in our government. She's not an attorney. There is nothing in her position description that's on file that indicates that she is a senior executive advisor. As the executive assistant of the governor, she schedules appointments, answers the phone and coordinates his travel. We did ask the governor's attorneys to cite any case law that supports the proposition that a government employee in the executive branch whose duties are primarily administrative and secretarial in nature would be covered by testimonial immunity, and he could not today. Idela Cruz is being represented by attorney Viola Alapujo. Babauta goes on to say that their committee is willing to meet with Alapujo to discuss any privileges or immunities Dela Cruz may be afforded under CNMI law, but that Dela Cruz remains subject to the subpoena and the House is prepared to enforce it through legal remedies. I would like to announce that the next committee meeting um, will, is scheduled for Tuesday next week on October 19th at 10.30 a.m. And we hope that no further barriers or obstacles are placed in our way so that we can receive the testimony of Ms. Frances de la Cruz, the executive assistant to the governor. Arrivals to the Northern Marianas reached the 1,000 mark in September, a bit more than the number of returning residents. Let's take a look at the numbers. September arrivals doubled from the month before as numbers from the tourism bubble with Korea grew. In August of this year, there were just over 550 visitors. That number went up to 1,100 in September. Tourists from South Korea made up the bulk of the figures. Korea was the largest market to the CNMI prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, and they're starting to trickle back in, taking advantage of incentives in the travel bubble program. MVA says 801 Koreans came to its shores in September of 2021 compared to zero visitors last September. The bubble started in July of this year. Since the beginning of the travel bubble, CNMI has received a total of 961 visitors from South Korea. Arrivals are expected to grow through the end of the year. The remainder of the visitors in September came from the U.S. mainland and Guam. 164 visitors arrived from the mainland and another 108 visitors arrived from Guam. 34 additional visitors from all other countries combined to visit the CNMI in September. Now this number does not include returning residents. Those are classified in a different category. MVA is exploring the fe feasibility of implementing tourism resumption investment plans for Japan, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Australia, and other parts of Micronesia. In Superior Court, a judge has ruled for and against Imperial Pacific in a civil action brought by a nearby tenant who says construction activities hurt their businesses. American Herbal Essence Group and others have sued Imperial Pacific for damages related to construction activities that impacted their business. Companies said they originally wanted a location near the casino and Coral Tree Avenue, but as it turned out, they were not able to even fully open because of a number of construction delays, and they say these delays were compounded by IPI failing to pay their contractor. They have asked the court to award them damages that include past due rental payments and money spent on renovation. Judge Teresa Kim Tenorio has granted a motion for default judgment on one of the claims of private nuisance and denied a second claim for tortuous interference. The next hearing to determine damages has been set for December the 14th. DPL says they are working on an up to $80 million plan to spend ARPA funding on infrastructure for five big homestead projects. DPL Secretary Sixto Igisomar says infrastructure for homestead development is the goal in the next two years to capitalize on up to $80 million in ARPA funding. Former Secretary Marianne Terragazo initiated the plan and now she is in charge of the office that will oversee it. Prior to the exit of former Secretary Marianne, uh, the governor asked all cabinets, you know, there's this ARPA that's coming out from Congress. I'd like to know an inventory of your infrastructure needs. So former secretary, before her exiting, she did submit her plan to the governor saying, uh, these are my uh, objectives about April of this year, uh, April of this year, early this year. Uh, these are the following projects that I need because uh, 
public lands currently cannot use money that it generates as a revenue to pay for infrastructure development. We're talking water, power, and sewer, right? Terry Gazo is now in charge of the Infrastructure Recovery Program, or IRP. She came knocking on my uh, door and said, you know, Secretary, congratulations, the governor just told me that the priority is you on this request. And so I was so happy, and so we start moving forward with it. And just so for your information, the priority is based on this $80 million plus, where is it going? Of course, there's some funding there for power, but the ARPA does not support power. So it's really for water and sewer. So right now, the priority for Saipan is Asgono. Asgono, we're uh, actively engaging with IRP and CUC to, uh, we, just, we just received the final 100% of the a and &E for Asgono homesteads. The last of 300 lots was surveyed on Friday. The a and &E design will now be reviewed by CUC and then water and sewer will be next. I think 80 million plus for DPO is a lot of money, but there's a lot of other millions that is in the CNMI with the governor and IRP that needs to be spent within two years. So we're all fighting, all meaning every entity that has opera funding, we're all fighting to position ourselves to make sure we're set and ready and proactive to engage with IRP and all the other regulatory agencies so that we can get the attention from these agencies so that our projects can be cleared so that we can start. So I'm truly hoping that CUC and IRP would finish and have an RFP out by early next year so that we can get contractors to get on board and start the Ascono. At the same time, uh, uh, pushing out Tinian and Rhoda. I got my COVID-19 vaccine. How about you? I come lango or sugar COVID-19. Come lango or sugar. Instead, actually, is COVID-19 vaccine the agu? I did it for my kids. I did it for my friends. I did it for my family. I did it for you. I did it. Let's do it. Do it for us. Let's do it together. Welcome back. You're watching the Channel 2 News. With improvement at tour sites underway, the Governor's Economic Council has turned its attention to the villages. The Marion's Village Pride Project will attempt to leverage the success of partners who recently helped with improving tour sites. Over 60 groups have joined in that effort, and now it moves to the villages. Jerry Tan. The Marion's Village Pride will be almost like a continuation also, but more focused on the village level. And so if any group would have any idea what they want to do outside the campaign also um, to uh, help to clean up the village, um, just contact us and we will be their partner in terms of su uh, any support, uh, including some materials also. Cleanup efforts are encouraged, also including the project Bus Stop Beautification, Village Flag and a Village Identity. We really hope to uh, see the community to come together. Um, and, and there's a lot of issue facing us, but at the same time, we see a lot of opportunity to improve our Commonwealth, our Marianas. And um, so it is not just for the tourists. And what's good for the tourists has to be good for the resident. Um, so if we can all just step up and, and, and join the effort. And there are many uh, groups that are doing it on their own every weekend, um, even without you know, uh, our, our campaign. Um, so if we just recognize that uh, this is our home and we want to really uh, work together and again to improve the quality of our life, 
Um, I think I think uh, you know we we can really do it and and take 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 it to the next level. Regionally, a land dispute erupts over a planned billion-dollar health care facility on Guam. Hafa Day, I'm Hannah Devonzo. Here's what's making news on Guam. A father and daughter are calling into question claims they were compensated for land the governor wants to build a billion-dollar health care complex on, and they say they haven't received a penny. Here's more. I have not gotten any response from the original landowners, but my research says um, that the owners of that property have already been compensated. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero on KUAM last week talking about military land in Magilao at Eagles Field she wants to use to build a new billion dollar health care complex. And while the governor said original landowners of the property have all been compensated for lands that were taken by the federal government, at least one original landowner and his heir begged to differ. For them to say on TV that they compensated my father, come off now. When you said that it was compensated first, show me that piece of paper, receipt or whatever, the check, whatever that you compensated him, show me that proof. Right here is the, the original landowner. If there was compensated, he would have gotten it, but he told you he didn't get it. Elsie Flores' father, 91-year-old Henry Tenorio Flores, tells KUAM lot 2517-BA is situated a little bit behind Eagles Field. He tells us the land had been in his family for generations. My dad died, you see, and before he died, I was given this land. Mr. Flores is one of 18 possible original landowners and heirs of the land the governor plans to use for a new hospital via a license that she says will be given to her by the military by December. The Air Force was wrong to give it back to the government, Guam, and the government was wrong to keep it. As father and daughter poured over maps, they talked about how much land Mr. Flores' family had owned in the area. But the promise of property dwindled over the years. Mr. Flores telling us he was swindled out of whatever land he had left after federal land takings. His daughter summing up the irony of the only land Mr. Flores now has. We have to live on land trust because we don't have land because they don't want to give us maybe half of that. But we have to get land trust for him to build. If you know his income, I don't, I don't want to say because he doesn't authorize him yet to say it. He won't believe it. Mr. Flores and his daughter are both fighting cancer, and Elsie says although the governor's words stung as they watched them, they're open to reaching a solution, if it's fair to them. If the price is right. The price is right. <laughs> because his age already, let him enjoy himself. And as for the governor's billion-dollar health center project, Elsie says Guam does need a new hospital, but not like this. There's better ways and there's better places. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUAM.com or downloading the KUAM News app available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Hannah Devonzo. Thank you, Hannah. Coming up, we're going to go to Grassroots Round Ball. We're going to hoop it up right after this. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Clowns made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537.
Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Buenas sports fans, let's hear it for Radar Love. The Northern Mariners Cycling Federation held a fundraiser last Sunday. They called it the Radar Challenge, the challenge to ride up to the top of Radar Hill. We call it tough love. 30 plus cyclists joining this fundraising race at the early bird hour of 630. <laughs> <laughs> the start was in front of the empty Mariana Resort and Spa. <clears throat> Onward through Marpy and up to Suicide Cliff. The first climb, a killer. It's called the elbow. This is what separates the riders, the ultimate test of will and strength. Down, 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 and turn around, look out, the Bird Island, look out. All the way to the finish line. In the road men's division, Henrin Gaviola takes first place with a time of one hour, six minutes, and 56 seconds of effort. Soccer coach Mita Michiteru finishes second. Right, yes. ah. Third place, Nap Dison, the veteran. In the road women's division, J. Ann Felipe clocks in at an hour and 15 minutes to win first place. <laughs> Happy birthday, Kimi. Kimi McKagan finishes second, one second ahead of Robin Spaeth. This fundraising event will help sending the CNMI cycling team to Guam for the Pacific Cup this coming December. Okay, uh, this uh, event is uh, part of our fundraising for this uh, upcoming uh, Pacific Cup. This is a fundraising for our CNMI team that will be joining uh, this coming December, uh, first week of December. Middle school, basketball, girls style, they finished their short season Saturday in high spirits. She's not heavy, she's my sister. Dan Dan Middle School, where I believe the last dinosaur on Saipan was spotted. Francisco M. Sablon M.S. has the ball. Not anymore. Dan Dan M.S. steals it. And then the drive to succeed. If at first you don't succeed, shoot, a, shoot again. Right. All right, everybody, let's do the dinosaur clap. The San Antonio schoolers learned that valuable lesson of following up. You know that lesson. Follow up.
there's a triple team, but FMSMS breaks it. And that leads to a layup. Rosie Sarlu leading her school to a knockout of Dan Dan and then getting last laugh over Hopwood too. But everyone left the gym after the GCA Eagles over FMS 30 to 12. Here's the windup and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw. Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Hours, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HOFFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Golfers. Come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. Check out the Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym. Shakes are a great meal replacement and you don't have to be a member to come and grab a quick and healthy lunch. Red Velvet is the Gold's Gym Smoothie of the Month, priced at $5.50. It includes your choice of low-fat or soy milk, protein, strawberries, and Oreos, just 280 calories, 20 grams of protein, and 60 grams of carbs. Bring your own cup and save 50 cents. The Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym in Garapan. And here's your weather report. Just a typical rainy season day. High 87, low 76. Rain was here and there. 84% humidity tomorrow. More of the same southwest winds. High 88, low 78. Seas 4 to 6 feet. Sunrise 608. A low tide in the morning. High tide in the afternoon. Sunset at 557. That's it. That's all we got. Thank you for watching. See you back here on Friday.